G'day guys, welcome on back. Sorry for disappearing for so long. But today, I'm down the road. Today, we've got a few little spots of paint to add on our wonderful Fiddler's Feathers. That's the plan. Got a bit of sun for it, a little bit of sun. And we're just gonna add some paint. I might pull you a bit closer yet though too because you're a wee way away. Hard to see what's going on, so let's just bring you up a wee bit. Bring you in. Bear with me. There we go. Oh, great start to it. Paint on the wrist. Un disaster. Let's get down here and get some of this paint, and then a little bit of this. And we should be away if it wants to come out. It doesn't want to come out, which is going to slow me down. Unless I pull that off the top. Still no. Now I've got you. Can't beat that. Can beat that. All right. Lid's coming off completely. Here we go. Voila. All right. Down there that can go. Working with a really small brush today, which is totally okay. Just use this and play around with a few of these little areas. Deep, deep purple. Just to build out some of these little pockets. Some of these little pockets. Colour into them. Not be nervous around the colours I'm adding either. There's a tendency as you get close to finishing a painting to get nervous. To think that maybe as you add these colours, you might ruin what you've made. But that. Uh, that feeling can shackle a painting. So that's to be avoided. If you can, if you can. Sometimes you can't though, you can't shake the feeling that every stroke you do, you might take away from the wild, crazy nature of the strokes you've already added. I think we'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> the pink is key in this one. Absolutely fundamental. It's um. The lady I'm painting, Phyllis Feathers, covered in these ready, vibrant feathers everywhere. And so, vermilion, red, magenta, and pink need to be in it to make it all stand out, pop. And one of the big things is just tons of hues. Lots of hues, lots of different kinds of red. Lots of different kinds of pink, magenta. Deal me up. Okay, might even chuck a little bit of purple through this uh, magenta that I'm using. Get something just a little bit deeper and darker. There we go. Wonderful. Now we're talking to it. Beautiful. <laughs> and hey Mike, how are we doing? Sorry, missed a few there. Is uh I've been on the road recently, running all over the show. And wildcard, now I don't want you to panic. So and we're not making a big deal out of this because everything's totally fine. We had a little bit of a car accident where it wasn't my fault, but it's resulted in a car getting a little bit damaged. So, dealing with that's been a bit wild as well. 
Is it easy to work visa here? Honestly, if you're from the States, you shouldn't have much trouble. Um, I don't think. I've got a work visa to the States, no trouble. So I assume when it comes to visas, a lot of the work between countries is tit for tat. So I would say, yes, you should be able to get one here very easily. But again, I'm not an immigration officer. So you might be going through the airport customs and saying, well, I was talking to a guy named Seb Gao who paints live on TikTok and he said I should be fine. That won't hold up. They won't like that. If anything, that would be less than helpful. Mike, everyone's totally fine. Everyone's totally fine. It's just drama. Just drama. And obviously, you got things like insurance to deal with, and you've got uh, um, all the checks and balances to go through. So, the question is, will I end up with Shelby and I end up with a new car? Will we repair the old car? What might happen? If we do go for a new car, will it be the same? Kid on the way, do we go for a minivan? Possibly. Possibly. I wouldn't mind that. Or do we just go for the same one again? I don't know. I don't know both. Yeah, possibly. And hello to Guatemala. I think um, mine is completely, mine, mind is not made up at all yet, so we'll see. This is Phyllis Feathers, a, uh, I wonder if anyone in this chat, does anyone know who Phyllis Feathers is? Was anyone um, given the privilege of knowing who that individual was? And this isn't exactly Phyllis Feathers. This is someone's character who's been constructed around Phyllis Feathers. So we're capturing that character. It's a stage name. That's the goal. And that's why we want that explosion coming out of you. All those colors, that idea of performance and show, it all needs to be in here be in here in spades. There we go. Get that effect of feathers. And we're going right around the canvas here. Right around to the back of it. Each draw, each time. Oh, oh. We got a little dog that looks like a black version of um, Baxter from uh, Anchorman. Where Baxter had those little red spots, just changed them for carbon black. Cute little dog. Not sure which breed. Cute dog though. Ooh. Ooh. What time is it? It's 10 to 5 here, so you are four hours faster than me. Four hours ahead. What am I going to do with that, all that extra time I get over top of you? Lucky me. Not many people on the beach. Well, that's the thing. I was going to paint at the. Um, I was going to paint on the veranda, but I went down for a swim before I started, just down there out in the ocean. And when I went out there, I was like, "There's not many people around. Maybe I'll just use the beach as my own little personal studio today." And a few people have wandered up, said hello, and drifted on by. But on the whole, it's just us out here, hanging out, which is kind of cool. So with this piece here, I've been doing a bit of work on it behind the scenes too. But it looks different to last time you saw it. I gave it a light, um, I guess it's the equivalent of a sand. I put a uh, light sanding on it to remove the bulk of the texture. And then I added a coat over the top of that to flatten it. And then once that had happened, and that, it's on fire? Perfect. That's what we're after. 
not fire in particular, but fiery, crazy, vivid feathers flying out at you. So if you're feeling that type of vibe, that means we're on the right track. And hey Ray, welcome on in. The, uh, yeah, it has been a while though Ray, and I've got to apologize for that, that's entirely on me. I disappeared for a while. Your boy, your artist, was on the road. On the road again. So, I was getting a uh, courtesy car sorted. Going down to grab it. Getting that all ticked over and arranged. And now it is. Fantastic. Building a few frames too. I've been working on a really unique frame. That's cool, Sandy. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been working on a really unique frame for uh, the Statue of Liberty work, the one the last reels are on. So with that Statue of Liberty frame, it's this gigantic frame. It's, it's wide, it's deep, and it's just beautiful. But the idea is to create that volume and that sort of um, presence that you get from things like the Statue of Liberty itself. Whereas if it was just a flat surface, you can lose that um, volume and presence. So it goes deeper and it goes wider to give it that intensity in person. And, oh thanks Alien, I appreciate that. The, um, I would absolutely love for you to own a piece of my art one day. One day. And there's no hurry, this is what I'm gonna do. So, you've got roughly, if I'm very lucky, you've got about 70 years. <laughs> so, like I say, no hurry. But, um, one thing I've been working on, slowly working on, I've held it back for a bit. The uh, videos I was talking about and the other thing I was working on was I've been writing down a bit of a book full of a lot of technique based stuff philosophy and art history I sort of wondered to myself because I had a lot of people asking me for advice on different things and I thought how can I do something of value? And it really beat with me for a long time because I thought it's so presumptuous or egotistical to think that you'd know what someone else needs to hear. And so I battled with that for a long time and I thought, you know what? I know what to do. Rather than writing anything that you think someone else needs to hear, write to your previous self. So I thought, what if I write a letter to me at the age of 18 or 20, when I was wide-eyed and confused and didn't know who I wanted to be, um, the thought I had was I could easily write and try and guide or explain or at least just comfort the younger version of myself who would need to hear certain things. So anyway, I've taken to writing that and it's going pretty well. It's going pretty well, which is fun. And it's a very colorful book, because you know that's how I roll. <laughs> Everything I do is colorful. That's just, that's just how it goes. If it doesn't have lots of color in it, I don't really want it. I mean, you know, being here on the beach, getting to paint and enjoying these colours and just playing around, I've missed this. I've missed this. Uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping a few of the regulars jump on here and say hi because the likes of Jules, Steve, Jay Smith, John, Mike, JB, Paul, Paul too. 
Lots of people. A lot of people who I haven't seen for a little while. And it's kind of fun to do the painting process with them. If it's your first time here, lovely to have you. Hey! And uh, that's all part of the fun. One of the things I'm looking forward to though, someday soon, and this beach makes me really jealous for it, is the uh, dogs coming up and down the beach. <laughs> yeah, I did read it. It wasn't the most constructive comment. <laughs> I tried to play it cool, but you got me. <laughs> tried. Ooh, wrong language. Can't understand. Cannot understand. Now let's get them on here. Okay. So this is the same color I'm using for the fitters as I'm going to use for 44444. Four, 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 four. A bit of the skin tones. The face is here. It's in the picture. But I want a bit more of that abstract wilderness coming into it. It's at that right level of chaos, and there's a temptation, especially with a smaller brush, to start trying to define the picture too much. We don't want to go into that. We don't want to go into that because if we get too much detail, we lose the chaos. And in a world of photography, and now, pardon me, I just burped a little bit. A world of photography and AI art, chaos is one of the things that painting can offer. Whereas AI art doesn't have chaos, it only has perfection. A perfect outcome from a perfect prompt. It can never be chaotic or, <laughs> I mean, could it be wrong? Sometimes it feels wrong, but it's the perfect answer to a prompt. But with painting, separate from photography too, photography gives you the perfect result, providing you how to use a camera. When you snap the button, have the settings correct you get the result that you're after or you're trying to go for a certain result most of the time anyway I'm sure there's types of photography that that doesn't apply for but uh, for paint pure chaos that's where it really comes into its own and if you're wondering what I mean by that and you're like what was he even talking about search up close Van Gogh works not the major famous ones like the um, Starry Starry Night and things, but the ones you never hear about. Have a look at those and up close in the paint, just the loose, crazy, weird, primal chaos. If you can get into that and see that, that's where you can really feel, ah, ah, I see why painting still exists. I see why photography didn't make painting disappear. I see why painting still has a place in the 21st century. And I see why painting's still going to be here in the 22nd century, if we're still here. It has a way of connecting with us through this wild, crazy, primal, chaotic way. That's kind of beautiful. It has to be pursued. Here we go. Now in these little strokes, we get more of those feathers too. There's more of this flittering coming out in the work. There we go. Hey, JB. I was just saying, I was hoping for some of the uh, regulars to jump in. How you doing, Jay? Good to have you in here. Good to have you in here. There we go. Let's get a little bit through here. I'm going to need some more of that white. You get to the uh, other side of the work and you start using less of the blacks, which it's good, there's enough blacks and blues that are falling back slightly, but the whites need to start pumping out, popping out. Yes. Who's that there, Natani? Am I saying that right? Lion Todd? You're 100% correct. Feathers. So, fillers, fillers, but it's not, 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 not. Regular, well, it is regular fillers, feathers, but it's not the filler spitters that you know. This is the character filler spitters. So, there's a lovely individual 
who's stage character as Phyllis Fitters. And this is their version, is their, um, them done up as Phyllis Feathers, their stage character. And the beauty behind this is, we, yeah, so we're capturing Phyllis Feathers, but we're capturing their re of Phyllis Feathers. So that's kind of fun. I explained that incredibly poorly, but that's kind of fun. I like that, uh, I like his, I like the vision they came to me with. They, they, they were very certain on the photo. They said, this is the one, I need, you know, I need this captured. You're the guy to do it. I want, I want my crazy, beautiful portrait captured. I want, I want all these feathers in the chaotic style that you do it in. And so we've been dabbling with this one for a while. And like I said, I've gone through a few layers and I'm still not in that stage where I think we've nailed this. We've got close a few times, but honestly, and, and like I say, we've gone on this one here, we've gone way over budget on ours, but uh, that's okay. Like I say, this isn't leaving the studio. Whew, that dog gave me a fright. This isn't leaving the studio until I'm in love with it. And I'm in love with it, but it's getting closer and closer, being where I want it to be. It's a cute dog. Oh, further down. Fair enough. How you doing? Oh, it's a great little spot here with the sun going down. Not too hot, not too cold, not too much wind. Yeah. How far are you walking to? Oh, just down to back into a river there. Yeah, I got you. Oh, thank you very much. Is this what you do full time? Yeah, this is my job. Wow, what a cool job. So, this person here, their stage character is called Phyllis Feathers. She's, um, you might remember her. her performer, name? Phyllis Feathers. Oh, amazing character. Known for lots of feathers, especially red, blowing up everywhere. So Hello. we're just capturing that bit by bit. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. see where we get to. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hope you do more down here. I'll be watching them. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your walk. Yeah. See, that's the perk. Such lovely people around the place. It's the beauty of the beach. You get the most amazing people down here. It's because people, I think, have already come down to the beach to have a lovely walk and enjoy themselves. Hey, uh, how we doing? Good. That's good. I think if you're already down at the beach to enjoy yourself, when someone's down here doing something like painting, which is kind of like a raw form of expression, why wouldn't you approach that painter in this case with a good, wholesome, inclusive mood? I always feel like sometimes I bring... I mean, is it... I feel like a lot of the time in some rooms, you might feel like you bring the uh, creative or the inclusive energy, but when you're at the beach, especially on a day like today, I feel like people give it back to you, which is kind of cool. Okay. Not them though, he didn't like it. <laughs> it wasn't his style. And that's a good thing, that's a good thing. Um, have a little look -see here. Cheers, JB. Um, no, so... I mean, you've got to nail it though, because at the moment, I'll show you both, let me show you around the beach here. So I'm going to show you down this side here. See the beach, there's not that many people on it. Maybe like 20 in that direction, I can spot immediately. There's our work that we're painting on, and then wow, pow, out that way. Maybe another 20 people. I say very few people down at the beach today. Just us. Which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool. And we've got a little bit more sun. Maybe like, I don't know, say 45 minutes, we'll see how we get on. And just keep doing these lighter colours. Throwing them around onto it. I think I might grab a little bit of um, green. 
no, not green. Green's the one thing. I don't know why I said green. Green's the one color I'm somewhat avoiding in this picture. We'll have touch points of it, but it won't be predominant. There'll be a little bit down through here, but we're talking teeny tiny, teeny tiny little bit, so. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. But I'm pretty excited. Um, oh, this sort of thing. Coming up. Coming up, one step at a time on me being a dad. Man, I'm excited. So close now. I'm gonna have a little helper in the studio. <laughs> um, paint I use is, uh, this is a mixture of things. Okay, so this, sometimes you'll see me using egg tempera which is a really thin coat. So I typically use for egg tempera, because it's so thin, um, makeup tools, they call it much nicer. Um, JB, it's in May, it's in May. Um, and then for this piece here though, specifically, we're using heavy um, bodied acrylics and Fluid acrylics. Fluid acrylics. Fluid acrylics and heavy bodied acrylics. So we're using a mixture of the ones that are um, quite bulky and thick in the texture, and then ones that will slide across the surface. So in practice, what that means is you start off with a lot more of the um, more fluid acrylics, put down these thin, non-textured layers to build up depth, and then you come in with the heavy body acrylics and get more texture into it for the finishing touches. And then sometimes you'll leap backwards and forwards, but that's overall a rough sort of you know, I'll do. Cheers, JB. And hey Robert, how we doing? How we doing? Oof, the wind is picking up though. So keeping my foot here on the side of the uh, easel to make sure that if the wind tries to pull my uh, canvas anywhere, I'm ready to catch it with my foot. That's, my, that's a technique I'm looking at at the moment. Ow, coming down through here. There we go. Let's give me a little bit more of this. Oh, wonderful. Stream this up through here, lovely. It's quite a muted tone. That sort of darker purple. Lovely. That's what I want all up through here. Down through here. And down these sides, oh yes. See that sun? I bet you just saw the color change. That was beautiful. Now we're getting hit with sun. That's what I'm on about. Give me that sun. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry guys, I missed that. <laughs> Next time, okay, there's a comment there by Blake, and this is a good one actually. Next time paint the beach, be a real artist. So, yeah, okay. So there's, there is this stigma in, I don't want to say the art world because it puts all artists in the same box. G'day, Steve. I was just saying, I was hoping a few regulars would jump on in here. And Steve and, <laughs> no, no, but Blake, you're all good. You're actually onto something very, very important because um, even though it's said in jest, a lot of people believe, especially with figure drawing, that to capture the true essence of someone, and you sort of leave the realms of science and a materialistic universe by saying that you certainly can get something else, an enigma, uh, um, what's that word that French people use for something you don't quite, a, um, a certain, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but they believe you can capture something more when the person's there in person in front of you and you're capturing them. Same thing that we believe a photo Similar to how a lot of tribes um, feel like a photo takes a part of your soul, we feel like a photo captures less 
than what you'd capture if you were painting the real environment. And while capturing the real environment is a beautiful thing, some of that stigma comes from believing that the ancient masters didn't do it and therefore we shouldn't do it. But I'd ask that if you look at the likes of Picasso and Van Gogh and these, you know, these ancient artists, if you gave them a camera or the internet, would Van Gogh still opt to paint a vase, his bedroom, or um, his face over and over? Would he explore the world and enjoy all the wild things that the internet could have to offer? I would argue he'd probably do the latter. Hey, uh, how you doing? Hey, That's good. Oh, thank you very much. Um, let me come on down here a little bit. Oh, thanks, Steve. Almost missed your comment there, but um, I appreciate that. It's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a good thing though, because I was thinking there, I was just saying to everyone earlier, it's funny, when you don't get to, because I haven't been painting as much, I've been doing a little bit of artwork, but predominantly building a few frames, doing some website stuff, doing some print stuff, and on the road, getting some stuff sorted. I've seen it before, but there was a little bit of a collision, and so I needed to get a courtesy car sorted. Wasn't my fault, but the other person was also just trying to do their best. But uh, it's what it is, and so that's been pulling me away from artwork. And you do start to crave it. You know that feeling you get when you have a day without coffee, and then <laughs> the next day, Sort of this craving, it's um, probably the early signs of addiction to be honest, but that, um, that need for it, you know, and that you can feel it, it's more of a guttural need that you want that thing. And that's what I was getting some small symptoms of from not actually painting. And I was looking at Phyllis for a while and I'd prepped the canvas and put some uh, coats in between on it to, uh, flatten the surface in different ways, but just a part of me just wanted to get back here, get in front of Phyllis in particular, and keep on painting, keep on keeping on. But, uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at. And slowly writing. Lots of writing, team. I've been waking up in the morning at the moment. Every morning, I've been waking up early, Shelby and I both, and I've been writing for about 30 to 45 minutes. So the goal there is to just to slowly build up just a big lump of text. Sometimes it's uh, unedited nonsense about art art history, what AI is doing in art, all that sort of stuff. I want to start sharing it with you guys too. I said I was going to, but um, the notes are so strange and disjointed. They almost need editing into a more cohesive body of something. So... writing. Writing so good for you. Oh my god. It clears my head so much in the morning. It's amazing how just writing down how you feel collates your emotions to help you better understand where you stand. Kind of cool. And with art that's so important because you can get lost in your own little creative journey. I don't mean to say own a little creative journey to demean it, but you can get lost in your own journey. And sometimes writing notes about how you feel can allow yourself to be more open and honest with yourself about where you stand. So I'm a big journal fan. Big journal fan here. Because the clouds look like the painting behind you. The 
clouds. Sometimes I paint what's in front of me, guys, but honestly, the issue for me is when I paint what's in front of me, it gets too crazy because the world's constantly changing. And I don't mean crazy as in crazy for me, crazy on the canvas because every time the waves move and the clouds move and the birds move, I start painting something new entirely. And so there's all these layers on top of each other, all chaotic and doing different things in their own little way. And while that's beautiful in its own right, it takes away a little bit of that subject matter that we can bond over. So in some ways, having an anchoring point of an image controls my crazy. Hey there, how you doing? That's good. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's a fun picture, eh? Quite bright. <laughs> guys, absolute sweethearts at the beach, lovely people who just want nothing but to share a moment and a compliment, like what a wholesome environment. But, um, but no, I, I think that some artists love to use an inspiration point of like an environment or a person and then they use that to inspire an image inside their own minds and paint, but for me, for me, I need that static thing. Not because I'm doing paint by numbers, but because without it, my crazy just runs off in all directions like an untamed explosion. And it's, ugh, it's not helpful. Wait, but the waves are moving. Yeah, the waves are moving. The waves should be moving. <laughs> um, but in a picture, I mean, it depends on how you use movement. Are you trying to capture a static moment? Are you trying to capture a feeling? When you say that, are you doing impressionism or expressionism? And the question I love to ask, oh my God, my favorite question, does it even matter? Does it matter if you're having fun? Do we need to define? And it's such a human trait to want to whittle something down and explain it and understand why it's good or why it's right or why it's sensical. But no explanation of what you're doing or why the art exists or whether it's real art or not will increase the amount of pleasure you get from making it. So why not just lose yourself in that pleasure and enjoy the strokes that you can do on the canvas? Building up the layers, building up the colors, seeing a picture come out from nothing. Such a human experience. And it is uniquely human because if you got an AI to do it, you wouldn't have this moment. And so, if the result's what matters, ask an AI for it. But if the process of feeling the flow state and enjoying making the art, stroke after stroke, is what matters, or what you crave or desire, then surely, surely, that's something that'll always be uniquely human. Kind of like a, uh, imagine art's like a fair, like a roller coaster. Let's say a roller coaster. If art's like a roller coaster, then even if AI could ride the roller coaster, you wouldn't say, oh, AI can do that now. They can ride the roller coaster, we don't have to. No, 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 getting on the roller coaster and doing that was for human pleasure. That was the point of it. The point was to ride the roller coaster, just like with art. No, 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 no. Yes, beautiful picture, that's fantastic, but the point is for the human to make the art. The point of a roller coaster is for the human to ride the roller coaster, for the human to experience the ride. Yeah, thanks Evie. I, that one came together much better than it should have, and I, I don't know if I gave it away with my little bit of blushing, but I was very proud of that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like a roller coaster. Expect that one to uh, show up on the thread, threads and Twitter. <laughs> I'll make it sound like I just thought about it and tweeted it. And you'll be like, nah, I was there two days ago. I was there when he was live on the beach. <laughs> he shamelessly even said he'd post it later. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, 
See, this is actually, okay guys, you're not gonna believe this. Depending on where in the world you're from, this is gonna sound really bizarre. This is New Zealand's. I'm on the beach of one of New Zealand's most populated cities. So this is Auckland, and this is one of the beaches in Auckland. So you're looking right now, I'm just, I'm just standing on the beach in one of New Zealand's most busiest cities. So when you think about that, there's not much going on in New Zealand. <laughs> That's the beauty of the place, that's the charm. The fact that there's not that many people. The fact that some people stop for a conversation and others walk by. This painting's brought a bit of joy to a lot of people's lives as I've walked past. One guy frowned, but uh, <laughs> everyone else seems to be really enjoying themselves, which is great. Which is absolutely fantastic. And we've done some good work today. This is this. There's more to go around this face area here, but the stuff we've done here with the feathers, we've changed it from being this murky um, porridge-like surface um, with all the colors and depth that it had and it's starting to punch out and pop out a little bit, which is exactly what we want. Those purples that we started with, beautiful. And then now that we're pushing into some of those yellows and oranges, pardon me. I need some vermilion. I need vermilion. I get this in my head sometimes. I need one particular colour and I cannot live without it. And right now, that's vermilion. Let's get some of that. There we go. Lovely. Deep, deep, deep vermilion. I'm going to mix it into my salmon that I've already got. And it's going to give me this intense sort of reddish pink colour. But it's what I'm after. It's what I need. Thank you very much. Love the dog, by the way. What are you painting? I'm just going to be lonely. No, go for gold. This is Phyllis Feathers. It's a uh, drag character. Okay. And this gentleman, this man here, this uh, person here, yeah. it's their stage character. That's cool. And so the capture, I'm capturing it right now, exploding out. Tons Fantastic. of Phyllis Feathers is known for a lot of feathers, bright oh, red nice, feathers. Nice. So that's what we're yeah. doing here. And lovely we're on the way. Location. I know, isn't it a great yes, day for it? It is, it's lovely. It's a beautiful place. Nice. If only I had a dog to hang around oh. and help me. Oh, Jeepers, <laughs> speak, <laughs> speak of it right there. How about that? How funny. He's, oh, like, no, he's no, like, did you call for a dog? <laughs> yeah, you know. How cool. <laughs> hey guys. Hey. No, very cool. Well, that's fun. No, I like it. Well, thank you very much. Maybe um, you'll be back down tomorrow and you'll see me again. Oh, okay. Who knows? Cool. It Who might. Knows? And you might say, oh no, you've ruined it now. I don't <laughs> like it, you know. <laughs> you... No, it's very cool. I'm not artistic at all. Oh, you're, yes, you are. Well, you just came and said, this is cool. Yeah, yeah, but I, I couldn't do that. But you can appreciate it. Yeah, no, I can. It's well, there we go. Cool. That's, that's, what, that's exactly what we need. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> hey, I thank you very much. <laughs> hey, enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. See, this is what I'm talking about, guys. You know how friendly people are down at the beach? People are lovely down here, absolutely lovely. Taking the dogs for walks, enjoying this environment, just being absolutely lovely individuals. I think, I think what happens too, guys, and this is gonna sound a wee bit cheesy, I think the type of painting that you're making, um, I don't wanna say attracts people in, but creates a vibe. I think that's the right word. It does create a vibe. And this one here is so positive, so happy, so ecstatic, so joyful that you just feel like it's magnetic. You, get a, you, you want to approach it. You don't feel like there's any negativity, um, reclusive, um, isolation, bah, feelings to it. It's just got that loud volume, joyful excitement to it. And I think humans gravitate to that. And so that's kind of cool. Hey guys, how you doing? There we go. Beautiful. And so many dogs on this beach. So many dogs. I don't know if you know this yet, but I'm a dog person through and through. I'm a dog person. 
Cats are okay. Cats are okay. But I love dogs. I love their just boundless joy. I feel like there's a lot we can learn from dogs just with their... Con con oh, that's the word. Contagious joy. I feel like there's a lot we can learn from dogs with their contagious joy. Like... They don't let little things get their day down. And you're like, not that they're fighting through it, but they just never picked up that weight in the first place. They're ready to help, ready to do whatever the plan is for as long as it need to be the plan. And they bring this joy to it, this energy, this vitality. I'm not saying that we can just be dogs and we can just be like that, but we can admire that and idolize that in a way to bring that into our own lives. I think that's a really positive thing to do. We don't need to go through days gruelly and miserable. We can be like dogs. I know we've got more responsibilities. With the responsibilities comes effort and these other things that come into it as well. But, you know, a small part of us can, at some point in the day, have that same joy of a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd be lucky to do so. Right, next colour. Magenta. This isn't regular magenta, this is brilliant magenta. So it's going to have a lot of pop to it. This is one of my favourite colours. It looks like hot pink, but it never feels out of place. So hot pink can go into some places and not sit nicely. Brilliant magenta really pairs nicely with your crimsons, if you have all the hues, crimsons and scarlets and vermilions, this one just sits in there beautifully. And that'll make you wonder too sometimes. You look at a piece of artwork and you'll think, there's pink in it, but it looks like vomit. It doesn't feel right. It seems cheesy. But, but, if you use Brilliant Magenta, it always seems to sit nicely on the painting to welcome the other colours and to sort of bond with everything in the picture. So... That's part of the beauty. I like that. And honestly, with the people down here today, I am lucky that I came down to the beach because I was that close to two, 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 painting on the veranda. And we would have missed out on this. Not this, we would have made the painting still, but like this, this. The sun wouldn't be in my eyes, but you will handle that, we'll handle that. It's 12.30, no, it's 5.30, but I am on 9%, so we are running towards the uh, tail end of the operation. There. <clears throat> yeah, that, my voice cracked. Tail end of the operation. We're running towards the tail end of the operation. <laughs> Just because my phone's going to die. <laughs> So we've got eight more percent. I'll stop it on one percent. How's that for a deal? But that's going to mean the goodbyes are going to be lightning fast. I'm going to be like, it's been fun, guys. Goodbye. Gone. So be prepared for that. But uh, until then, just enjoy ourselves. Slap around. See what I mean? You see how there's... I'm splattering pink all over this. And it doesn't feel out of place beside that red. They combine into each other really nicely. That's brilliant magenta for you. That's, that's what it's all about. God, I love this color. Bring on the brilliant magenta. Put a bit more up here. There we go. Keep it coming. A bit more up around here. Lovely. G'day mate, how we doing? You've been walking up and down the beach for a while, you got a good tan going on? Thanks. <laughs> We're painting Phyllis Feathers. She's a lovely stage character, uses a lot of feathers. Red, lots of red feathers. So this is an individual whose stage character is also Phyllis Feathers and we're capturing that. And all its explosive, happy, joyous, excited vitality. <laughs> That's the go. You just out for a walk, are you? Yeah, go for a walk. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure what the mix, but head by day at the moment. Hey, that's all good. That's all good. Heading out for a walk's a good start. Hey, cheers, mate. I appreciate that. Enjoy the rest of your walk. I 
how many times do I need to say it? Lovely, lovely people. Just incredible people. Here we go. Spatter this around here. <laughs> I'm not overdoing it with the pink, but I do get excited. You get a colour like this, and it just you just keep seeing here. I get colours like the um, sap green and olive and things. Um, in front of the painting, I don't quite. It just doesn't feel like it goes in a lot of places. But then you give me brilliant magenta, and I just look and I think oh, I know everywhere where I want that to go. And all of a sudden, the painting just gets more and more vibrant with pink and reds, and you just cannot help yourself. <laughs> Not that that's a bad thing, but it happens. It's just such an easy sub too for things like um, light greys. So more than any other colour I find, blues, reds, oranges, brilliant magenta seems to sub in for greys so seamlessly, so perfectly, but mm, That's enough of uh, me fangirling after <laughs> brilliant magenta. But it's like, guys, it's cool. It's a great colour. <laughs> it's a great colour. I need to settle down, but it's a great colour. It's um, magenta when it comes to those light tones. Brilliant magenta. And then you've got um, ultramarine blue for the darker tones. And then when you get really, really light, close to the white, that's where I love Naples yellow. And that sort of, if you were to simplify me down to like a three color combo, that's it. Ultramarine blue, brilliant magenta, Naples yellow. And that's where you, that's my power three. And you'll be like, if you're ever looking at the Seb Gower art piece, you can just literally look at it and be like, uh, <laughs> you can literally just look at it and go, all right, where do you put the colors? Because he's definitely working off those three somewhere in this. And, if he knocked one out, which one did he knock out and what did he replace it with? Sometimes that happens. Naples flies out the window for some baby blue. You can swap magenta out for lots of different things, but why would you? It carries such a punch. Such an attention-grabbing colour. So much intensity to it. What's going to be next? Do I s mm, maybe I'll do this. Here I am beating up uh, green. Let's use some. Hello, Zid. Song from Michael Learns to Rock. All right, I didn't know that. It's exciting. So this is what happens when you don't put the lids on your paint. See how slow that's coming out? I am squeezing that. But that's enough, that's all the sap green I need. Put the lids back on your paint, team. Don't be naughty like me. I get, I get wildly excited while I'm painting and I stop putting the lids back on the paint and what happens is it hardens over on each one of them. Ugh, and it's just the most annoying thing. The most annoying thing. So, Now we're gonna beat the devil out of it, but I'm not doing that. I'm just dry brushing off a little bit more of that pink. It's gonna make my green stand out that little bit more. And this is raw green too, which is wild. This is just powerful raw green. And the idea behind adding this is it's just gonna add a bit more of a punch to a few of those background places that need it. Ah, uh, green. You gotta be careful with green though. She'll sneak up on you. you get excited and add too much of it in. And it's one of those colors that wants to be added in softly. Just a few little spots. Just a few little spots. And a lot of these spots will cover up again. Like we'll put paint over it because actually green doesn't want to exist as the final top layer. It wants to be underneath deep underneath the other colours, but existing ever so slightly. I know I said at the start we're not using green, 
but we're going to make this full back. It just needs a little bit of no shadows. Just a little bit. Beautiful. Just like that. There we go. And on to the next one. Where am I at? Ha! I'll show you. Look at this. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Woo. Beach down here. Fresh new plate, which is fun. But I won't get that in the way. See my shadow on the painting? We spin around here. And this is the giant beach. Yee-hoo! What a lovely, lovely place to be. Now, let's spin you back to here. Is my shadow... Yeah, my head's getting... Oh, no. No, we're golden. It's coming the right way. Here I was thinking, uh, I was in the way. It's not Queenstown, no. It's not Queenstown. But you'd be forgiven for thinking it was. This is New Zealand. So you'd think with the accent, that would be in Australia. Some beach in Australia. But honestly, statistically, there's more Australians and more beaches. So <clears throat> if you're new here, that would be an obvious way to do it. And yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I do. I do do a lot of oil paintings. But I do have a love for acrylics. And the reason I love acrylics so much and always come back to acrylics is they do have this amazing ability to dry so fast that you can do layering in a way that with oils would take a significantly longer time. And although time shouldn't be a constraint on art, and it isn't, your ability to actually layer 20 to 40 times in a work in a moment of inspiration can happen with acrylics. But with oils, you need to hit that same inspiration, like I say, 20 to 40 times over the course of months to years in order to make the picture. And so that's why sometimes with oils, there's more of this premeditated approach to it. But, but when it comes to the likes of acrylics, they can feel more wild, primal, and pure, even though they're not with the real ones. Yes, it is Philistilla. G'day guys, how are we doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm very good. How's your walk going? Magic. It's absolutely magic. Such, the weather is so nice. It's the perfect day for it. For March, eh? Yeah, especially for March and especially for painting. Absolutely. That's, this is, this is painting kind of weather. Oh, that's fresh. That's absolutely that's fresh. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Great. Hey, enjoy the rest of your walk. And you. And you. Thanks so much. Cheers. Catch ya. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much, guys. How's your walk going? That's good. Yeah. That's good. It's um, Phyllis Feathers. So she's a uh, drag queen in the States. Yeah. Very famous. And um, it's actually a character who plays her. He, um, he's, a, he's an American man, and he, his drag queen character on stage is Phyllis Feathers. And so I'm doing a portrait for him. Okay. And the idea is to capture that sort of exuberant, flamboyant excitement yeah, yeah. that the character brings to the stage. So yeah. you want to see the feathers before you see the face just exploding out at you. That's the plan. Oh, wow. well, thank you very much. Yeah. So you're going to send it to him? Or? Yes. Yeah. So right. shipping to the States can be a bit expensive, but I've got a good team. People who make fancy boxes and frames and all sorts. So Does he know you're doing this? Yes, yeah, 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 he's paid for it, otherwise I wouldn't be doing oh. it. I would. <laughs> Good on you.